Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now on question number five from the January 2022 S1 Statistics 1 International A Level LXL paper. This is a question about normal distribution. There's GIA writes a computer program that randomly generates values from a, no from a normal distribution. He sets the mean as 40 and the standard deviation as 2.4. Find the probability that a particular value generated by the computer program is less than 37. So his values are such that they are normally distributed with a mean of 40 and a variance of 2.4 squared. Okay, that's the standard deviation of 2.4. We want to find, for part A, we want to find the probability that the value that he generates is less than 37. So we need to standardize this value and give it in terms of z which has a standard deviation of one and a mean of zero so we have to basically use the formula z equals x minus mu over sigma which means the value you want to standardize which is the 37 okay we want to find the probability that z is less than that's 37 minus mu mu is the mean which is 40 divided by the standard deviation which is 2.4 so we want to find this probability okay so we want to find the probability that z is less than and let's find out what this value is we have 37 minus 40 which is negative 3 over 2.4 that gives you negative 5 over 4 which is negative 1.5 so the probability that z is less than negative 1 point um was it 2.5 5. Okay, so that's what we've got to find the probability of. So if we think about our normal distribution curve, which it looks like this, I have one prepared because it's a lot neater to, to do that. But yeah, you can draw your normal distribution curve, just that shape there. And we're looking for the probability that z is less than negative 1.25. So what we have here is the mean is 40, and the standard deviation is um, uh, is equal to 2.4 and we're finding that the probability that z is less than or that the v is less than 37 so those are the v values when we standardize it we make the mean zero and we're finding the z value of negative 1.25 and the reason why we standardize the score is so that we can use a table of values now we're finding the probability that z is less than this value here now when we look at our table of values we don't find any negative z values what we're going to find in the table of values are the z values from 0 onwards. So what we've got to do is use the symmetry of the normal distribution curve and go to 1.25 instead of, of minus 1.25. So we're going to find the probability that z is greater than 1.25 because that area here is symmetrical to this area. We're looking for this area here. It's the same as z being greater than 1.25. So this is the same as the probability that z is greater than 1.25. Now, what's the probability of that? Well, when we look at our table, our table of values has z values and the areas which are to the left or below those z values. That's what the table tells us. We need to find the area to the right of this z value, which is going to be 1 minus the probability that z is less than 1.25. Okay, to find the area we need to find this area here the table is going to give us if i go to 1.5 1.25 is going to give me the area all the way all the way back here if i take away this area from one because the total area is one it leaves me with the area that we're looking for so i've got to go to the table and look at 1.25 and on for, for z and find what the area is and do one minus that and that will give us an answer so if i go to the table which i've got here okay i'm going to look for 1.25 for a z value See, the, pro the, the probability that I'm finding gives me the value of z being less than that value of 1.25. 1.25 is over here. That's z equals 1.25. So let me take that value. Um, 1.25 over here. I'll put it on this right page. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. 0 0.8944, that's the value I need. Okay, so 0 
So this is 1 minus 1 minus 0 0.8944. So the probability that the value is less than uh, 37 is equal to this answer here, which is 1 minus 0 0.8944, which gives us 0 .1, 0 0.1056. 56 to 3 SF, which is right answer 0 0.106. That's the probability that the value is going to be less than the 37 that he generates on his computer. Okay, so that's part A done. Now we're going to go on to part B. It says, Gia changed the mean to M, but leaves the standard deviation as 2.4. The computer program then randomly generates two independent values from this normal distribution. The probability that both of these values are greater than 32 is 0 0.16. Find the value of M, giving your answer to two decimal places. Okay, so now, um, the probability that both of these values are greater than 32 is 0 0.16. So there's two independent values from this normal distribution. Okay, and we want to find that we know that the probability of both of these values are greater than 32 is... So the probability that the value of this is greater than 32... Not just one value, but two independent values. Now, if they're independent, then the product of their probabilities is going to be equal to, you know, the product of their, is equal to this probability here. Okay? Because if they're independent events, then the probability of one happening, then the other will be the same as the product of their probabilities. So if I do the probability that V is greater than 32 times the probability of V is greater than 32, it's going to give me 0 0.16. So basically, this is like the probability that V is greater than 32, all squared, is equal to 0 0.16. So therefore, I've got to find that, that the probability that V is greater than 32 is equal to the square root of 0 0.16, which is 0 0.4. Okay, so I need to find the probability that V is greater than 32 is 0 0.4. So again, if we take our normal distribution curve, Okay, we know that the probability that V is greater than 32 is 0 0.4. So the mean is here, we don't know what it is, but I know the probability that V is greater than 32 is 0 0.4. So that means the area to the right of 32, this area is 0 0.4. Now I know it must be on this side of the mean because it has, you know, this area, half of this will be 0 0.5. So the probability that V is greater than 32, greater than 32, to the right of 32, ha is less than 0 0.5. So 32 must be on this side somewhere. And the area to the right of it is 0 0.4. Now, we have in our table of values, okay, we have this other table here, okay, which is um, when you're given the, the P stands for the area, and this stands for the area to the right of this Z value. These are the Z values, and these are the areas to the right of them, the probability, meaning the area to the right of those Z values. So we want to find the probability that the, you know, the value is greater than um, zero, the, the area 0 0.4. We want to find the Z value for which is the area to the right of that Z, Z value 0 0.4, and we can see it's right over here. It's exactly as we need over here. Okay, this one here. Okay. 0 0.2533 okay 0 0.2533 so let me just take that that's what we're looking for 0 0.2533 so let's go to the <coughs> so I know that the z value that I'm looking for there is going to be 0 0.2533 okay so that's the z value I'm looking for so this is the value of Z here is 0 0.2533. So I know that the probability that the value is greater than 32 is equal to 0 0.2533. So now I can work out what my the, 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 the Z value is. So that means Z is equal to the, the score, which is 32 minus the mean, which is M, over the standard deviation which is, um, as I said, it was ch unchanged, 2.4. So this now is my Z value. 
this is my z value. So this is sorry, this is not the probability. This is this is zero point four. This is the probability. Excuse me for that. That's a probability. So here we we know that the z value is zero point two five three three. So I'm going to have thirty two minus the mean over two point four is equal to zero point two five three three. Okay, this is the probability. We're going to find we know the z value zero point two five three three. So 32 minus the mean over the standard deviation gives us that z value. So we can say 32 minus the mean is equal to 2.4 multiplied by 0 0.2533. So we can say m, if we rearrange this, is 32 minus 2.4 times 0 0.2533. So that will give us the value of m, which is the mean. So we're going to have 32 minus 2.4 times 0 0.2533 okay and that gives us 31.392392 okay so to 3sf that's going to be 31.392 I put 39 I said 392 and I wrote 329 392 that's going to be 31.4 okay 31.4 is the mean Okay, that's the new mean, 31.4. <clears throat> okay, so that's the answer to part B. Now we're going to go on to part C. It says, Gia now changes the mean to 4 and the standard deviation to 8. So the value now is normally distributed such that the mean is 4 and the standard deviation is 8. The computer program then randomly generates 5 independent values from this normal distribution find the probability that at least one of these values is negative. Okay, so basically, if we have our normal distribution curve, let me go back to get it from here. Okay, so we have a normal distribution curve. <coughs> Now we have a mean of 4, all right, that's the mean, and we want to find the, the probability that at least one of these values is negative. Okay, so there's um, five numbers that are going to be generated, and we're going to find the probability that at least one of these numbers is negative. So negative means when it's less than 0. So 0 would be here somewhere. So we want to find the probability that it's the probability that the value is less than zero. Okay, so let's standardize this. This is the same as the probability that the value, that z, sorry, is less than, that z is less than the score minus the mean over the standard deviation, which is the probability that z is less than negative a half. Now, the probability that z is less than negative a half, okay, is going to be, um, all right, that's going to be this probability here. But if at, if at least one of these values is negative, all right, that means out of the five independent values, that means that could be uh, one of them is negative, or two of them are negative, or three of them are negative, or four of them are negative. The only one that it excludes is that they are um, all positive. Okay, so we know that the probability that Z is greater than um, negative a half is the same as the probability that the value is greater than zero. Okay, so if we can find um, the probability that the value is greater than zero, okay, and we raise that to the power five for all five picks, and we do one minus that, that will tell us the probability of at least one of those values is negative, because this is a probability that all five of them are, are positive which is the only outcome that we don't want, okay? We want to have all, we want to have at least one of them is negative. That means you can have one negative, two negative, three negative, four negative. Okay, what you can't have is all five negative. Um, sorry, uh, you can have, yeah, so you can have one negative, two negative, three negative, four negative, five negative. The only thing you can't have is no negatives. No negatives means all of them are positive. That's what I'm trying to say. So if all of them are positive, okay, then this is not fulfilled. That's the only time it's not fulfilled. 
when all five of them are positive. And this is when all five of them are positive. So if I do one minus that, it will give me all the other combinations. One negative or two negative or three negative or four negative. The only thing it will miss out is all five negative. Uh, sorry, is, is all five positive. Okay, that's the only thing it will miss out. All right, so that's the only thing I need to exclude. All five positive. The, you know, I don't, I, that's, that's what I have to try and find. So if I do one minus the probability that the, the value is positive to the power of five, that's how I'm going to get my answer. So one minus. Now the probability that value is less than zero is the probability that z is greater than negative a half, as we said. Raised to the power of five. So we've got to go to, this is negative a half for z, negative 0 0.5. Of course, we've got to go to the positive part of it, which is 0 0.5. And the probability that I'm looking for now is the probability that z is greater than that. Okay, because I'm, I'm looking for all of this area here, which is equal to the area that z is less than 0.5 because it goes all the way back. It's like symmetrical. All right, so if I find the probability that z is, is, is less than 0 0.5, Okay, this is like 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0 0.5, and this has to be raised to the power of 5. That part of it, that's going to give me 1 minus, so I go to my table of values and I look for z equals 0 0.5. I go z equals 0 0.5, which is right here at the top. Okay, it's right here, so you have... 0 0.6915, 0 0.6915. Okay, so that's 1 minus 0 0.6915, and that's raised to the power of 5. So let me just change the color back. So that's going to be equal to, if I take the calculator, 1 minus 0 0.6915 raised to the power of 5, and that gives us 0 0.84. 1889, 889, which gives me 0.842 to 3 significant figures. That's the probability that um, at least one of these values is negative, which is 1 minus the probability of them all being positive. Okay? All right. So that's the answer to that question. I think that concludes this question number 5 from this um S2, S1, January 2022 paper. Okay, so just to make this clear, because um, maybe I was a bit uh, confusing in some of the wording that I used when I was thinking about this, that we want to find the probability, okay, that at least one of these is negative. And the only, you know, so if at least one is negative, that means you're going to have one negative and the rest of them positives. But it could be in any order. Okay, so you're going to have all the different ways of getting that. And then you're going to have two negative and the all the rest are positive and you're going to have three negative and the rest are positive and you're going to have four negative and one positive the only thing that you don't want is this okay this is what we want to exclude these have got different combinations of them lots of different combinations so to go through every combination will be very tiresome like for example this is also you know i could say plus minus plus 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 and plus plus minus there's so many different combinations so to go through each one is going to be a big hassle but if you do one minus this probability you got the answer because it that one minus this only one that doesn't fit will include all the others that's why i'm finding the probability of all of them being positive the probability of them all of all of them being positive is the this area here okay and this area here is the same as the area less than 0 0.5 so that's why i found the probability that z is less than 0 0.5 and raise that to the power of 5. Why raise the power of 5? Because you want all 5 picks to be the same, positive, greater than 0. All right, so that gives you 1 minus 0 0.6915 to the power of 5, which gives you your answer. Okay, so I hope that made it a bit clearer. That's the answer to question number 5 from this paper. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in this playlist over here. Other questions from this topic of normal distribution can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.